Praise the Lord. Uh, uh, if you are waiting for great miracle global explosion, I said, Praise the Lord. What a wonderful way to end the year. And whatever good thing you have got during this year, all the various global crusades in multiplication, all of them put together, and the Lord is going to impact your life from tonight in Jesus' name. And whatever water has passed under the bridge, all the bad things that happened all through this year and in the past, in your life, in your family, in your community, an end is coming today. Yeah. Miracle. Yeah. Manifold miracle. Yeah. Multiple miracle. Yeah. Manifested miracle. Yeah. For you. For me. For everyone. Yeah. Tonight, it will begin in your life. Yeah. What are you there? Father, we thank you tonight and bless your name. You are the God of yesterday, the God of today, and the God of tomorrow. You are the ever-present one, and the one that is never tired. You always manifest your power, and we know that today, according to your promise on failing, your promise on limited, you are going to bless, you are going to visit, you are going to touch every life tonight in Jesus' name. From the youngest to the oldest, from the least to the greatest, from those who are here at the Alpha location and everywhere all over the world, manifest yourself, manifest your love, manifest your power. Let it be really explosion of miracle here on our grounds and everywhere in Jesus' name. Confirm it in every life. We thank you because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down in your great expectation. And your expectation will bring manifestation. We're looking at the word of God briefly tonight before we pray. And we're looking at Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 22. Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Here was Peter on the day of Pentecost. The power had come. The Holy Ghost had come into their lives. And the Holy Ghost had possessed them. And with the possession and the penetration and the power of that Holy Ghost within them. Revealing to them what was going to begin to happen now in the dispensation of the Holy Ghost. Old Testament dispensation of the Father. In the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, dispensation of the Son. And from the Acts of the Apostles, Acts of the Holy Ghost, actually, all through to today, the dispensation of the Holy Ghost. And it was moving them on, out of what had been, into what will be. And he said, ye men of Israel, hear these words. The moment you hear, heaven will pay attention to you. You hear the word, you accept the word, you personalize the word, and you know that this is yours. A miracle will happen in your life. And then he introduced Jesus, our Savior, our Lord, our Master, the great miracle worker, the redeemer, the healer, and the deliverer. He said, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God 
among you by miracles and wonders and signs. Here is the Holy Ghost putting it in the mouth of Peter. And he says, our Lord Jesus Christ is the one appointed of God, anointed of God, accepted of God, approved of God among you. Is there tonight among you? In our midst tonight, our Lord is there. Our Savior is there. Our Redeemer is there. Our Healer is there. Approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by Him in the midst of you as ye yourselves also know. We're hearing testimonies from all over the world. What Christ has done. What Christ is doing, what Christ has the power, the authority, and the anointing to do, as ye yourselves also know, as you yourself for tonight will know it in your life, will know it in your family, will know it in your experience in Jesus' name. And then, as you look at verse 39 of that same chapter, it says, For the promise is unto you. He had told us of the past, what Christ did before his crucifixion, before his resurrection. Now, it says, it doesn't stop there. He did it in the past, and it is doing it today. And I want to tell you, all the testimonies you have heard, this year alone, I've seen Christ do marvelous, wonderful things. It's opened the eyes of the blind. He has made the lame to walk. He has mended broken bones. He has repaired enlarged hearts. He has healed tuberculosis. He has healed cancer. He has raised the people at the brink of death, almost dying, he raised them up. And he has healed COVID-19 pandemic. And the miracle of the Lord has been marvelous and multiplied in very many lives. And now, here comes your turn. For the promise is unto you. For the provision is unto you. For the prophecy is unto you. For the power is unto you. For the manifestation is unto you. A manifestation coming upon your life. Impossibility will become impossible. The incredible, the unbelievable will happen in your life as you connect with that promise, with that prophecy, with that provision and with the power of the Lord tonight in Jesus' name. For the promise is unto you and to your children. Our children will partake in it tonight. Our youths will partake in it tonight. Youths everywhere, young adults everywhere, fathers and mothers, children and parents, miracle coming upon your way tonight and then it says and to all that are afar off afar off originally afar off from jerusalem afar off from israel afar off from the alpha location where the holy ghost came upon them and today afar off from this place god will saturate this place with miracles and then afar off to all, not some, not just a few, to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. That's why tonight I come to speak to you on great miracles for everyone from Christ. Are you here and amen there? Great miracles for everyone. How many are partakers tonight? I said how many are partakers tonight? Remember, on a crusade field, everybody comes. 
And then, whatever your desires are, whatever your demands are, there will be a demonstration from heaven upon your life in Jesus' name. Great miracles for everyone from Christ. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, the miracle of salvation out of bondage. The miracle of salvation out of bondage. Number two is the miracle of sight for the blind. God, a literal way, will open blind eyes tonight. If you were born blind, at the end of the message, as we call on the Lord Christ, the light of the world, sight will come to you. If you just became blind recently, the power of Christ coming upon you and touching your eyes, your blindness will be taken away in Jesus' name. If your sight is dim, even with the help of what you have on your eyes, you can't see well. Brightness, sight, perfect sight will come to you tonight in Jesus' name. And now, number three, is a miracle for all seekers who believe. Whatever you are seeking, you've come. To the right place you've come to christ the only one that satisfies everyone and he will satisfy you tonight in jesus name the miracle for all seekers who believe lord i believe lord i believe and the moment you exercise your faith and you pin your faith on Christ tonight, whatever it is you need, it will supply every need in your life tonight, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Number one is the miracle of salvation out of bondage. This is story in John chapter 8. Christ, from the beginning of that chapter had been taking lives turning them around for the better and their lives as they go to him became better and brighter and even gave them a broader vision and now he comes to this part of chapter 8 of John that tells us about the miracle of salvation out a bondage for you, for me, and for everyone. And I pray as the Savior is here tonight. I said the Savior is here tonight. I affirm the Savior is here tonight. He will save everyone out of bondage in Jesus' name. Look at the story here now. In John chapter 8, reading from verse 32 and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free as Christ came to the people he wanted them to know to know the truth because he knew that lies deception Tradition and the falsehood of idolatry will bind people and will keep on binding people. The children of Israel at that time thought they were the greatest people on earth. Their tradition was the greatest tradition. Their religion was the greatest religion and they thought because of tradition. And because of religion, they thought they were free, but they were in bondage. And Jesus said, ye shall, ye shall know the truth. Can you imagine the Lord Jesus telling 
all those Israelites, you don't have the truth yet. Can you imagine all those religious people being told you don't have the truth yet? That's why you are not free. But ye shall know. Tonight you will know. I said tonight you will know. And the Lord assures us that the moment you know the truth, that truth will set you free it says the truth will make you free what truth is that was he talking about number one is the truth about god who god is they saw god in their mind as the one who gave them sickness who gave them infirmity who gave them defeat who give them destruction they said that's the will of god for them they were languishing in bondage they were languishing in deprivation they were languishing in their helplessness and they thought that's the will of god for them they didn't know the truth number one about god what's the truth about god for god so loved the world that he gave his only son only begotten son that whosoever whosoever not only an israelite not only a jewish person not only the white not only the black everyone whosoever anywhere everywhere in the world whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life they need to know the truth about god they need to know the truth about christ that christ is the way is the truth and the life and no man no woman and no israelite and no gentile and nobody anywhere cometh unto the father but through the son they need to know the truth that christ is the way is the truth and the life and that life comes through him salvation comes through him power comes through him acceptance by heaven comes through him they needed to know the truth about the holy spirit that the holy spirit will help them to remind them how to pray he remind them of their sin. He remind them of the stumbling block before them. So that they can take that out of the way. And lo and behold, they will come to the Lord. And you shall know the truth. And they will know the truth about themselves. You see, if you don't know the truth about yourself, you cannot be made free. You need to know the truth, number one, about yourself. That everyone on earth is a sinner the high the low the well traveled the well enlightened the well educated the powerful one the vip and not the very and the very nandi not very important everybody all have sinned and come short of the glory of god they needed to know that truth but they didn't know they thought religion will save them they thought Christianity will save them. They thought denomination will save them. They thought the good works will save them. You shall know the truth about God, about Christ, about the Holy Ghost, about yourself. That by the deeds of the law, whatever you try to do by yourself, you cannot pull yourself out of the bondage of sin, out of the evil of sin, that it takes the power of Christ because of what he did on the cross of Calvary to set you free. They should know the truth about themselves that they were sinners and they have to accept the truth and that they could not save themselves that their salvation their redemption, their righteousness, and their acceptance is only found in Christ. And that the moment they believe, and they needed to know the truth that everyone can believe. Nobody will say, I cannot believe. You have not known the truth. If you know the truth, you will know the Lord has so created us 
that he puts the key of believing in our hands. And whosoever believes in the Lord shall be saved, and ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Now, in verse 33, look at the response and the reaction of the people. And they answered him, would be Abraham's siege. They were depending on religion. They were depending on their uh, progenity. That is, their uh, forefathers. He said, we'll be Abraham's seed. And we were never in bondage to any man. Now, that's a lie. They didn't have the truth. They didn't speak the truth. We all know they were in bondage to Pharaoh. How could they say we're not in bondage to any man? They, we know that they were in bondage to the king of Assyria. And then to the Chaldeans, that's Nebuchadnezzar, and then to Herod. We know they were in bondage to the government of Rome. Even at that time, you see there are people, they say they don't want to confess. They say they are free. They are not in bondage. Meanwhile, they are in bondage to their past. Meanwhile, they are in bondage to evil character. Meanwhile, they are in bondage to bad habits. Meanwhile, they are helpless in bondage and they could not get up and move on by themselves. Don't be like them that will tell a public lie, an obvious lie, that will say, well, we are never in bondage to any man. How says thou, ye shall be made free. You must accept that there is bondage, the bondage of sin, before the freedom will come. And thank God tonight, your freedom has come. And Christ is standing before you, wanting to hand over that freedom, that redemption, that salvation unto you. But you must accept that here you are, you need the salvation of the Lord. Look at verse 34. It says in verse 34, Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever, any ruler of the Jews, like Nicodemus, Whosoever, any popular woman among the children of Israel, and yet living a defeated life, a sinful life, a common life like everybody else. Whosoever committed sin, he might attend synagogue, their synagogue. He might attend assembly, our assembly. He might attend a church service, church services everywhere. He might have a so-called Christian name, like William, like Stephen, like Joseph, like Josephine, like Mary. He might have any title, like he's gone to a college where they study Bible and he's got some degrees after him. Whosoever committed sin, the servant of sin. That's the bondage that they needed to be relieved and totally saved from. Whosoever committed sin. Now, here is the moment of truth. Look at your life. Can you see, since you were born, since you were a baby, a toddler, an infant, growing up, teenager, growing up out of school, growing up working in an office, growing up, anyone, can you say, you're totally free, you have lived an angelic life, an heavenly life, a holy life, a perfect life. In your thoughts, in your mind, in your action, in your relationship. When people are there, when you are all alone by yourself. When temptation trial came upon you, when you ought to stand and you were crushed by that habit of sinfulness 
Anybody here that will say, like the children of Israel, whenever in bondage, whenever sinned, whenever did anything wrong, now whosoever has committed sin becomes the servant of sin. And then in verse 35, the Lord said, And the servant abided not in the house forever. There is an everlasting house. There is an everlasting home. There is an everlasting heaven. And the servant of sin, the one bound by sin, the one tied up by sin, might be a thin rope of a little sin, a thick rope of a big sin, public or private, personal, or well known to other people. The servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. The son is there to set us free, and the son is here to set you free. I congratulate you tonight. Freedom has come. Salvation has come. I'm going to read verse 36. But before I read verse 36, I want to read verse 44. In verse 44, it says, Ye of your father the devil. Think about that. To tell an Israelite who said, We're descendants of Abraham. Were the children of God. We were not born through fornication. We belong to God and for Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. To come to them and to tell them the truth they never expected. The truth they were not bargaining on. The truth they have never, never heard. And to tell them directly, you of your father, the devil, and the laws of your father, you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he abode not in the truth. He abode not in the truth. It's the truth that saves. It's the truth that sanctifies. Is the truth that empowers. If the devil has never known the truth, has never possessed the truth, has never told the truth, has never appreciated the truth, and there's no truth in him, he cannot save. And all that follow him cannot be saved. And the people that have the nature of of Satan, because actually sin, S I N, is Satan in nature. The nature of Satan in everyone that has not known Christ the truth, it might know any other thing. The truth of chemistry and the truth of biology and the truth of mathematics. That kind of truth cannot save, cannot prepare you for heaven. But the truth in Christ and the truth coming on and coming down from Calvary. The truth of Christ, that's what comes and blows that sin away and he forgives you. And your life is totally changed. It says Satan was a murderer. From the beginning, and he had put notch in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it, the father of lies. And he cannot see. But Christ has come. That's why he said, The thief cometh not. But for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But praise the Lord. Christ said, I am come. Christ has come. For you, Christ has come. For your salvation, Christ has come. For your deliverance, Christ has come. And for your life to turn and round for the better and for transformation to come. Christ has come that they may have life and have it more 
abundantly. Abundant life tonight. Abundant life tonight. Abundant salvation tonight. Abundant deliverance tonight is coming your way. I said it's coming your way. I said it's coming your way. Let's come back now to that verse 36. And then it says, if the son, that's our only hope. If the son, that's the only power. If the son, that's the only possibility for anyone, anywhere in the whole wide world to be saved, to be delivered, to be accepted by God, to be prepared for heaven. If there is anything, anyone that can save and get you out of that bondage of sin and get you to the everlasting Father and the eternal home, here is the only one. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, shall make you free, shall make you free, shall make you free. Be sincere with yourself. As you look at your life, are there things, the year is running to an end. I'm not asking whether you've been to church this year. I'm not asking whether you are religious. I'm not asking whether you have heard the name of Jesus before. I'm not even asking whether you have said, I am saved, I am saved, I am saved. I'm not asking whether you say the name of my church is the most beautiful name of a church in town. All I'm asking is this knowing thing and this gripping thing. And this sin that makes you a servant of sin and a servant of Satan, freedom is available tonight. Salvation is available tonight. Deliverance is available tonight. Can you be a man enough to be sincere? A woman enough to be sincere? A boy, a girl enough to be sincere? And say, today will be the day of my salvation. It will happen. I said it will happen. Because if the Son, that's the Savior, if the Son, that's our Lord, if the Son, that's Christ, if the Son, that's the Deliverer, if the Son, that's the Mighty One, if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, he shall be free indeed. Am I talking to somebody there tonight? What are the people I'm talking to? Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. The Lord comes down tonight. And he comes in your place there tonight. And there's no power from hell that can hold you down. There's no power from anywhere can keep you in bondage to sin, in bondage to evil tonight. Wants to say, I know the truth now. If a God, he loves me. If a Christ, he gave himself for me about the Holy Ghost is the one prompting me and he wants me to have this freedom. I know the truth about myself now. The truth is I want, I desire this salvation. I know the truth tonight. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Salvation has come to you. I come to point number two now, and it's the miracle of sight for the blind. What can you do? If you go through this life that you cannot see, what do you do? If you go through this life, you cannot see your future. I'm talking to those who are spiritually blind as well. I'm talking to those who are morally blind. There are people, they are morally blind. They are intelligent, they are educated, and they are so-called, they are civilized, and they are well-traveled, but morally, they are blind. They do not know the difference between right and wrong, between good and evil, between acceptable 
and unacceptable behavior. They're just blind morally. They're those who are physically blind. God will open your eyes. There are those who are intellectually blind. They just don't know and they can't reach. The Lord will give you insight. There are those who are spiritually blind. They don't know the difference between righteousness and religion. And they put everything, they say, what's their religious? They travel here, travel there. They've been to Jerusalem. They have drunk uh, of the water of River Jordan. They think uh, that has settled it for them. They're spiritually blind. They're those who are emotionally blind. They do not know how to carry themselves. Or their emotion. There are people who are blind completely in their lives. They are here and there and they stumble and they don't know what they stumble on. But there's a miracle of sight tonight. Give me a good alpha location. Amen. <laughs> Lagos, headquarters, miracle explosion. Amen. <laughs> The miracle of sight for the blind. Let me show you an example. This is an example that feeds every case. Christ, the sight giver. Christ, the light of the world. The light of everyone that comes into this life. It says in Mark chapter 10 verse 46, And he came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind, but Timaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the wayside begging. And that's where man will end. If he remains blind, He'll eventually be begging. He might not beg for food. He might not beg for position. He might not beg for authority. Eventually, there was this man. He was rich. He had everything at his fingertips. Talk about riches. Talk about houses. Talk about property, talk about authority, talk about long leg, and talk about contacts. He had it all. But he was blind to eternal life. Eventually, he died. And when he got to the other side, he did his begging. He said, Father Abraham, I beg of you. If we remain blind, physically, spiritually, intellectually, emotionally, morally, if we remain blind, eventually we'll turn a beggar. And so this man, as Christ came, he was blind. His own was physical blindness. Then he said, in verse 47, it said in verse 47, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he was blind physically, but he was not blind intellectually or spiritually. He heard it was Jesus Christ, and the people that were not blind physically, but they were blind spiritually, were just following. You are just part of the multitude, but this man, Jesus of Nazareth, God anointed him with power and the Holy Ghost. He went about doing good. My time has come. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God by miracle signs and wonders, is passing by. My time has come. He heard. And what he heard, he acted on and received his sight. And tonight, what you hear, you act on, you receive 
your sight in Jesus name you hear you believe you act on what you hear and what you hear will bring healing to you will bring deliverance to you will bring total freedom to you but he must say unto the Lord approach the Lord what he wanted he began to cry out and say Jesus thou son of David have mercy on me this man was intelligent he knew but my tears forever flow and all my zeal no longer no all these for sin cannot atone thou and thou alone must save for i say i brought all my money to the synagogue and to the temple all that can not open my blind eyes for i go to river siloam and wash i could not have my sight but here is christ he knew the truth he knew that if he called on christ and he got the attention of christ his sight will come his miracle will come tonight you get the attention of christ your miracle will come your sight will come your healing will come your deliverance will come and so he cried out it was in the public and the man was not ashamed of the public he knew everyone that got Christ's attention, got that attention in the public. Look at the man that had a withered hand in the public. Stretch out thy hand. That's how I got the healing in the public. Look at the woman with the issue of blood 12 years in the public with a crowd. If I took the aim of his garment, that was in the public. Look at Zacchaeus. Today's salvation is come into this house. That was in the public. Look at the woman that was weeping and rubbing and uh, cleaning up the tears from the feet of Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, your sins, which are many, are all forgiven. That's in the public. Look at this man. This man knew, if I'm going to get anything from the Lord, I must not wait for a private conversation a private prayer it in the public and he said Jesus thou son of David have mercy on me mercy is coming to you tonight he didn't say Christ do you know the name of my father his name is uh, Timaeus and can I tell you about him is a philanthropist is this is that he said no there's no other name not the name of my father not the name of your father not the name of the founder of our community not the name of anyone there's no other name by which we can be saved but the name of jesus and so he cried out jesus thou son of david have mercy on me i don't have any marriage i come for mercy anybody coming for mercy tonight i said anybody coming for mercy tonight that's how we're saved in the mercy of god that's how we're healed in the mercy of god that's how we're delivered in the mercy of god that's how he takes us and he prepares us for heaven that's the mercy of god i hear some people say i paid all my dues in our church I give my tithes every time and I'm not feeling in paying any tithe and they say Lord I want to get to heaven and I've checked my records I paid all my tithes my friend that's not what gets you to heaven it's Calvary that's not what gets you to heaven is the mercy of God salvation comes upon the basis of the mercy of God and that mercy is coming to you today look at verse 48 verse 48 it says and many charged him that he should hold his peace many charged him that he should hold 
is peace. Those are the people that have been giving him some little money, some little help, some little transportation, some accommodation. They said, hey, shut up. We, we will help you. Now, they could give him whatever. They couldn't give him a sight. All the people of the world and all the beneficiaries and all the benefactors of the world can give you whatever. They cannot give you salvation. They cannot give you redemption. They cannot give you the ticket to heaven. And the man knew when he told him, keep quiet. He cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Verse 49. And Jesus stood still. That man caught Jesus' attention. You will catch Jesus' attention today. When I ask you, you want this savior, you want this freedom, you want this benefactor, you want this redeemer, where are you? Raise up your hand. The moment you raise up your hand, you will catch heaven's attention. The Lord will look at you favorably tonight. He will forgive your sin tonight. He will turn your life around tonight. You will catch his attention. Let me hear your amen. amen. But if you keep quiet, close your mouth, drop your head, and then other people are saying, Lord, I'm here. I want salvation. I want forgiveness. I want redemption. And then you say, uh -uh, I'm a church man. I'm a church woman. Uh -uh. I was born a Christian. Uh -uh. How were you born a Christian? Because I was born in a Christian home. Uh -huh. If you were born in the garage, does that make you a car, a vehicle? No. If you were born in a staple of those sheep and goats, does that make you a sheep? No. Where you were born, who will give birth to you? That doesn't make you a Christian. All I've seen and come short of the glory of God. But if you want to catch the Savior's attention and you want to say, Lord, I am here, right here today, you call on Jesus and you say, I turn away from my sin. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Salvation will come to you there. And healing will come to you there. And now they call the blind man saying unto him be of good comfort rise he calleth thee be of good comfort whatever you're expecting tonight be of good comfort it has come i said it has come and now in verse 14 verse 50 and he casting away his garment because that garment told him of the past the way of the past, the life of the past, the blindness of the past, the deprivation of the past, the shortcoming of the past, everything that signified the past life of blindness, it cast that away. Tonight, everything of your past, you are redeemed in Jesus' name. And then all that you can throw away. If any man be in Christ, he'll become a new creature. Old things will pass away. Old life will pass away. Old pain will pass away. Old sickness will pass away. Old heredity will pass away. All things in your spirit in your soul, in your body, in your life, in your future, everything will become new. I'm talking to somebody in particular. Where is he? Everything, everything, everything will become new in Jesus' name. And he rose and he came to Jesus. He rose and he came to Jesus. Look up here. If he didn't come to Jesus... Everything it hurt would be a waste. He came to Jesus. If he didn't come to Jesus, all the cry, all the shout would be a waste. If he didn't come to Jesus, all the fasting, all the rolling on the ground, all the prayer 
will be a waste. If he didn't come to Jesus, all the resistance when the people told him, shut up, and he didn't shut up, all that will come to waste. The final thing that brings the salvation, the final thing that brings the deliverance, the final thing that brings the healing, the final thing that brings the explosion of miracle upon your life is to come to Jesus. Is the Savior, is the healer, is the deliverer, is the destiny reformer. He'll reform your life and reform your destiny and you'll never be the same again. He came to Jesus. He came to Jesus. Somebody there. He came to Jesus. Somebody there. Where are you? He came to Jesus. Somebody there tonight. Your life is going to change. Somebody there tonight. Your pain will take away. Somebody there tonight. Your healing will come. Somebody there tonight. Miracle explosion will take place in your life. Where are you? Where are you? He came to Jesus. At the moment you came explosion of miracle in your life in jesus name and in verse 51 it said jesus answered and said unto him what wilt thou that i should do unto thee and the blind man said unto him lord that i that i that i you see there are people when you come to meetings like this, like that man, there were multitudes there. He didn't say that we may see your goodness. We, uh -uh, make it personal. That we may know who you are. Make it personal. What wilt thou? That I, Christ, the Lord, the Son of God, the Savior, the Redeemer, should do for you and he said lord he owned him lord he was humble nothing to be proud about you come before the ancient of days you come before the father of eternity you come before the one that the government of the whole world will be upon his shoulder you have to humble before him he said lord he came with an attitude of worship he wasn't going to worship himself or worship his country or worship uh, Israel or worship, uh, you know, their forefathers. He said, Lord, that's to Christ, an attitude of humility, an attitude of worship. He came with an attitude of surrender. Lord, he said, now I'll not be Lord of my life anymore. I'll not be master of my faith. I'll not be the one that decides where I go, where I don't go. You are now the Lord of my life he came with an attitude of surrender he came with an attitude of faith he believed in the Lord and he said you are now my Lord religion not my Lord denomination not my Lord tradition not my Lord my forefathers not my Lord the history of a nation not my Lord you are now the Lord of my life he said Lord that I that I that I might receive my sight and then in verse 52, the Lord said, and Jesus said unto him, go thy way. Tonight, you are going back home happy. You are going back home saved. You are going back home delivered. You are going back home with heaven in your soul. In Jesus' name, go thy way. What used to happen will not happen anymore. He used to stumble because he was blind. Go thy way, you'll not stumble anymore. He used to fall into the ditch in the past when he was blind. Go thy way, you'll not fall into the ditch anymore. Go thy way. He used to fall into deception of men. The deception of men that will pretend they were leading him aright and they led him astray. But now 
he will see go thy way you will not fall into any deception anymore in jesus name he used to be very sorrowful and very sad you know other people can see i cannot see i'm helpless i'm hopeless he used to be very sad go thy way instead of sadness there'll be gladness in your life the joy of salvation will make life different for you from tonight in jesus name and then thy faith has made thee whole thy faith has made thee whole and immediately he received his sight and he followed jesus in the way he received the sight he didn't say ah, I miss a lot of the dancing in the nightclubs. Let me go to the nightclub. He followed Jesus in the way. I miss a lot in society. All the things that happened at the parks and at the crossroads. I miss that a lot of times. And now my eyes are open. Let me go and see. He followed Jesus in the way. He didn't go back to old religion. He didn't go back to old friends. He didn't go back to all those old things. He received received a sight i'm talking to somebody there you receive in jesus name your sight you receive your salvation you receive your new life you receive your miracle you will receive your signs and wonders you receive in jesus name and then the power the grace, the hope, the possibility to follow Jesus in the way. The power will come to you. Even from this night, you will follow Jesus. I will follow Jesus. Somebody say it aloud. I will follow Jesus. I come to number three now. Number three, we're talking about the miracle for all seekers who believe. We're seeing the miracle that came upon those who are in bondage as they believe the Lord. And you, you are seeking the same thing that they had. We're seeing the miracle of sight to the blind, of healing to those who are sick. And you are saying, Lord, you have done it for others. You'll do it for me. It's coming your way. Now, as you're seeking the Lord with all your heart, or your soul, or your mind, and you say, this is what I want, no disappointment tonight. I said no disappointment tonight. We're coming to Isaiah chapter 55, and I'm reading from verse 6. It says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Is the creator seek ye the Lord while he may be found? He is our savior. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. He is a deliverer. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. He is the miracle worker and the one that produces signs and wonders in our lives. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. He is near. Other people are receiving. Other people are touching him. Other people's lives are being changed. And this is your turn for your life to be turned around and to be transformed and to be changed. And you seek the Lord at this time. You will not be like Pharaoh. Before you even know what I'm going to say about him, if you should say amen to that. I said, you will not be like Pharaoh. <laughs> Moses asked him, the frogs covered the whole land. Everybody suffering from the plague that the frogs had brought. The frog in their room, in their living room, in their kitchen, in the everywhere. And the frog bothered everyone. Then he called for Moses and he said, Moses, I know your God is great. I know your God can do all things. Pray to your God that he will take these frogs away from me. 
away from my people, away from my throne, away from our land. And Moses asked him a question and said, Pharaoh, when do you want the frogs to be taken away? What did he say? I said, what did he say? He said, tomorrow, Pharaoh, the frogs bother you. The frogs trouble you. The frogs make you dirty. It's nauseating. This is bad enough. It has never happened to your nation like this before. Now you have the chance that the frogs will be taken away, Pharaoh. What do you, when do you want the frogs to be taken away? Tell me what he said. Everybody tell me what he said. Wasn't that foolish? I want all the frogs bothering my life to be taken away today. I said I want all those frustrations in my life to be taken away today. I want all those messengers of Satan, of the devil, bothering my life to be taken away when I will not be as foolish as Pharaoh. To be as foolish as him is to say, I want to spend another night with Satan, another night with the destroyer, another night with the deceiver, another night with the one that I come to steal and to kill and to destroy. I want to spend another period of time with the destroyer of my life and destiny. He says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. That's today. And call you upon him while he is near. We'll do it today. Salvation will come today. Healing will come today. Miracle will come today. Power will come today. And the favor of God, favor from heaven will come upon your life today in Jesus' name. How do you seek the Lord? And how do you find the Lord? Look at verse 7. It says, And let the wicked forsake his way. Let the wicked forsake his way. It's just a matter of saying, Lord, I've been foolish. I forsake my foolishness. I've been sinful. I forsake my sinfulness. I've been bad. I forsake all that dirty thing, ugly thing in my life. I come to Christ and today I receive him, I accept him as my Savior and Lord. Let the wicked forsake his way and the righteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And he, the God of heaven, will have mercy upon him. He had mercy upon Bartimaeus, he will have mercy upon you. His mercy is everlasting. His mercy is for all people that will call upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. He will pardon, he will forgive, he will blot out, he will cleanse away every sin you ever committed in your life in Jesus' name. And then in verse 10, it tells us, for as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not hither, thither, but watereth the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. Look at verse 11. So shall my word that goeth forth out of my mouth be. The word of salvation will take effect in your life. The word of healing will take effect in your life. The word of open eyesight to the blind will take effect in your life. And the word of miracle explosion will take place in your life in Jesus' name. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish. It shall accomplish. It shall accomplish. You hear the word. You receive the word. You believe the word. 
and you have assurance that God has spoken and that word will be fulfilled that's the accomplishment of your life in Jesus name but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing where to I sent it the word of God is about to prosper in your life right now the word of salvation is about to prosper in your life right now word of healing about to prosper in your life right now and the word of miracle power signs and wonders about to prosper in your life right now in Jesus name I believe I believe there's miracle for all seekers who believe yours has come where are you yours has come I said yours has come it will forgive every sin you ever committed in your life he'll take all your guilt away he'll take eternal everlasting judgment away from you and he'll make you a child of God your name will be written in the book of life in heaven where is he where is she there amen the Lord has located you there anywhere you are now it's bowed and eyes closed this is the day of our salvation you will not miss it today whosoever whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved your name is about to be written now in the book of life the father himself is holding the heavenly pen is waiting for you as you just indicate lord i want your forgiveness remission of sin cleansing blotting out all my iniquity salvation from everything that held me down in the past now I come it's about eyes closed you want that salvation from the Lord now raise up your hand wherever you are you're calling upon the Lord while he is near you're not pretending anymore and you're not seeing anymore old religion old tradition old churchianity whatever denomination will save me you know that salvation only comes as you give yourself unreservedly unto christ the lord the savior who has paid the price of your salvation wherever you are just raise up your hand here in lagos there in your stage there in your nation and there online anywhere you are just raise up your hand and say lord i'm humble enough to call him lord lord i worship him as my lord lord i surrender to him as my lord lord i believe as i make you lord now you'll not reject me just raise up your hand and the lord himself in his goodness, in his love and mercy, will forgive you. If you are raising up your hand, please stand up. Anywhere you are, you are raising up your hand. God bless you. God bless you. Just stand up. Just stand up. Publicly, all those people received their salvation, their redemption. And so publicly here, you say, Lord, you have my heart now. You have my will now. You have me completely surrendered completely unto you, wherever you are. Just stand up. And as you are standing up, tell the Lord, I give up my past. I give up all my sins. I confess. I return unto the Lord. 
And I believe on a sacrifice at Calvary. I believe that you are there to totally, completely blot out all my transgression. Hand over your life completely unto him. Tell him, tell him, I belong to the Lord now. I give my past, my present, my future, all to the Lord. Forgiven, I believe. Saved, I believe. The grace of God in my life now to continue to live a different life, a new life, I believe now. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for all these who have come unto you. For salvation, for forgiveness, for the blotting out of all the bad things they've done in the past until now. Lord, wash them up. As white as snow in Jesus' name. Take the guilt of sin away. The punishment of sin away. The pain of their evil life. Take everything away from their lives in Jesus' name. Let the peace that comes with salvation come into their hearts now. And the joy of salvation in every heart, every life now, in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, the grace to live like Christ wants them to live. You're grant to everyone right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Savior. Your salvation has come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Please keep on standing. Our counselors are nearby and they'll take your details. We are rejoicing with you that now you have the Savior of the Lord and you have the salvation of the Lord. Keep on standing until they get to you. We'll call on our moderator to help us handle this counseling session. Then we come back. Don't go away yet. Miracle on the way. Amen. 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 Miracle on the way in Jesus' name. Amen. Keep on standing. Members of the choir, rise up on your feet and join them. Join the counselors to reach those who have given their life unto Christ. Let's reach them. Let's reach them. Keep on standing. Keep on standing. The counselors will come to you now by members of the choir. Please quickly join them. Quickly join them. If you have re received Christ online, please, you can also fill the form online. You, there is a phone number you can call online. Is you will see it on the screen now on your screen. Let's be fast, let's be fast, let's be fast. Cancel us, be fast about it. Mm. There is also email address online for online people who gave their life to the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. For SMS, WhatsApp, you will see the number on your screen. Call this number 091 544 49263. Again, the number is 091 544 49. 263. If you are watching online, you just gave your life to Jesus. It is the best decision you have taken. Welcome. You are here. You are giving your life to Christ. 
It's a beautiful decision tonight you have taken. Brand new life, abundant life. Guess what? Miracle is coming your way. Don't go home, don't go home, don't go home. The man of God is still coming. There is explosion of miracles tonight. The one explosion. You will catch something tonight. I will catch my own too. Together we will testify. Let me hear your amen. Counselor, be very fast about it. We have limited time. Let me be fast about it, please. If they have not reached you, don't sit down. Just stand up or raise up your hand so that they can reach you. As they feel that the form, look at the name. It's better written in capital letters. Check the phone numbers. Should be 11 digits. Look at the address. Written on the paper very well before you collect the paper, after you have collected the paper from them. Check it very well. If there is a name, you are being called at home. Or in the community where you live, you can put it there. It's to help you so that you continue in the Lord. The online audience, maybe you are in your room, anywhere you are, in the States, global, globally, make sure that you are doing what you are doing now. Taking the names of the converts. What a right decision you have taken tonight. To become a son, a daughter of God. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Catalogs, we are waiting for you. We are waiting for you. We are waiting for you. Don't go home. The saturated miracles are coming tonight. Power is coming on you tonight. Healing is calling, coming on you tonight. I will receive mine. You will receive yours. Deliverance tonight. Don't go home. The vehicles will be waiting. The vehicles will be waiting. Counselors, be fast. To my left, if you have finished, ca ca let, let the supervisor give me a sign there. In the middle, to my right, I'll be waiting for the supervisor to give me a sign that you are finished. Let me fast, let me fast, let me fast. Let me pass. To those who gave their life to Christ tonight, I rejoice with you. I say, welcome. Welcome. Total freedom. Total freedom. Online audience, hope you are doing all we are doing here now. Globally. In all the locations. Outside the churches. This counseling time. Counseling time. Don't forget, miracle is still coming. And it is for you. Don't rush to go home. Um, how can you run away from miracle? This one is but on but blessings. Don't go home. December miracle. How will you end? This 2020, 2021 without pack full miracles of blessings. Counselors, let's be fast, let's be fast, let's be fast, let's be fast. Let's be fast. Yes. And those that are praying, I love what you are doing. Continue praying. The power is coming. You will attract your miracle. Be praying. Be telling God, my time has come. My time has come. Supervisor, I'm waiting for you. To my left. 
in my front, to my right. So I said, I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. Let's be fast about the counseling. Just take the names. Look at the names. Look at the address. Look at the telephone number, the GSM or whatever. Should be 11 digits. Professor, I'm waiting to see your hand up to tell me you are finished. Those that are praying, you are doing the right thing. If you have your prayer request, just bring it out and raise it up. Raise it up. Mm. Testimony will follow. There will be testimony tonight. Explosion of miracle tonight. It's your night. It's my night. Together we will rejoice. So as well as I'm waiting for you. Raise up your hand if you are finished. Thank you. I could see that hand to my left. In the middle, despise us. I'm waiting to see your hand. Thank you very much. God bless you. To my right, supervisor over there. I'm waiting to see your hands up. Wave it at me. To my right, I'm waiting for you, please. Supervisor to the right. Thank you very much. Let's rise up on our feet to receive the loaded, packed miracles. Lift up your head, your eyes unto the Lord. Your miracle is coming. Explosion is about to happen. Left, right, medium, right. Miracle explosion. Miracle explosion tonight. First night. Join me and welcome the man of God. Praise the Lord. My miracle is here. True, 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 true. My miracle is here. Testimony in your mouth tonight. Heaven is ready for you now. Where are you? Raise up the hand and lay the hand in the place you have the trouble. If you are blind, your eyes are going to open. You are lame. You are going to rise up and walk. The power of heaven is going to touch your life at this very time in Jesus' name. Anywhere you are, any country, any state in Nigeria, any state in any country of the world, or you are by yourself there, we're connecting you with heaven now. And when you hear the final amen, that miracle would have been there. Yeah. Father, we come before you. You are the God that cannot fail. You've told us already that the promise is unto us. The power is for us. The miracle explosion is for us. And the healing, the deliverance, everything heaven has to offer is for us. There's no exception tonight. Send forth your power. Heal your people in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray, whatever the oppression, whatever the attack, cancel it now in Jesus' name. Brain problem, madness, insanity, psychological problem, be removed in Jesus' name. Blindness, the Lord is touching your eyes right now. Those blind eyes be opened in Jesus' name. Deaf and dumb, 
Receive your miracle in Jesus' name. Swelling in the tummy. Swelling at the back. Swelling of goiter on the neck. Swelling in the feet, elephantiasis. Be healed in Jesus' name. Incurable disease, so called cancer, ulcer, tuberculosis, kidney problem, respiratory problem, long standing problem. Be healed in Jesus' name. Pain at the back, in the head, in the spine, anywhere in the body, be healed in Jesus' name. Curse, yoke, affliction, enemies' affliction, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, everywhere, to the right, to the left, in front of me, anywhere you hear the sound of my voice, receive your miracle now in Jesus' name. Online, in every country, at the message, the ministration, the prayer, getting to you now, you are healed in Jesus' name. Lord, let there be confirmation everywhere. Performance everywhere. Miracle explosion everywhere. And the things impossible for man, possible for God, do it now, Lord. Confirm your miracle everywhere. In Jesus' name I pray. It has happened. As you check yourself, you'll find your miracle is there right now.